Hello, good evening, and welcome to our front. Today is a two prong show. First, we deal with the breaking news that the president, jo of course, President Anna Danko Akufuado, has actually appointed the first and the only person who is supposed to be spared in the office with a deputy and together with the Auditor General. I'm talking about the Office of the Special Prosecutor. And this person is in the very citizen vigilante that you've known. His name is Martin Alamisi Ben Kaiser. Amidu. We'll be getting to know whether this man is the favorite of all the people that have been complaining so far. We've heard from some members of parliament on the minority side, too, of whom have raised questions about whether or not he's partisan and cannot hold the office. One, Roxin Dafiamepo believes that he is a member of the NDC and that makes him unqualified or not the best person to do so. Secondly, we've also heard from former Deputy Attorney General, who is in the very person of Dr. Dominic Aine, who believes that in the run-up to the 2016 election, Mr. Amidu spent quality time supporting the governing uh, New Patriotic Party, and that also unqualifies him to actually head this office. So we are clear, the Office of the Special Prosecutor is actually to investigate and prosecute cases of corruption and corruption related offenses to prevent corruption in the public sector and also recover the proceeds of corruption and corruption related offenses. Martin Amidu was Attorney General between the years of 2011 and 2012. January 2011 to January 2012, he was uh, sacked according to then government, but he believes he resigned from the late J.A. Mills' government. This is perhaps one of the biggest issues that the NDC has started raising about his appointment. The president believes he's independent, he is the right lawyer, the right man with the competency to pursue this particular matter. But Let's go to the phone lines and speak to one man who proposed that without a more independent person, that office which the president has sent to a couple of days ago will be moot. Is actually supposed to join us on this conversation. Before we launch into the other conversation later on in this particular show, well, former Shraj Boss uh, ML Shot is supposed to be on the line now. And if you're on the line, Justice, you're welcome um, to Upfront. Thank you very much. It's been less than a week. It's exactly last week, Wednesday, when I asked you that simple question. Who do you think is more qualified and um, actually most qualified for this position? It happens to be that Martin A. B. K. Amidu is the man selected by the president to be the first special prosecutor. Is that good news? It is good news, so far as I'm concerned, because um, Martin, Martin Amidu, we all know, is a, a very strong, serious anti-corruption crusader. Uh, we know he's very competent. He's demonstrated his competence as Deputy Attorney General as well as uh, Attorney General. Um, he has taken the fight against corruption very seriously. He's demonstrated his commit commitment to the fight. And uh, most importantly, he appears to me to be somebody who is very independent-minded and who has moral courage, which is essential if you're going to fight corruption. You need somebody who has the moral courage to, you know, investigate and prosecute persons irrespective of their political, you know, social or economic status. Is so, that, it's that competence and perhaps independence that's also being questioned by a former Deputy Attorney General and also another member of the NDC in the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana and stressing Parliament because they would have to approve of this particular nomination by the President this is the majority required in this particular case. It may be just words from the minority, but Dominic Aine and Roxin Dafiamepo believe strongly that um, um, Martin Amidu is partisan. In fact, for Dafiamepo, Martin Amidu has shown he's a member of the NDC, he's never hidden that. And on the other side, for uh, the gentleman we are talking about in this case, the former Deputy Attorney General, Martin Amidu supported the MPP in the run up to the 20. 16 elections so he is not the best person to occupy the position mindful of his leanings in times past um what is the evidence that he's partisan i mean i don't get that um, for a fact he's never hidden he's a member of the opposition ndc yeah i mean that that should be uh, something in the feather of the cap of the president in, in terms of appointing somebody who we all know to be a member of the NDC, you know, the rival political party. So um, I think this is why, you know, I want to consider this appointment to be 
a very objective, prudent, and wise one because he's somebody who, you know, was a member of the NBC, and um, he, he left or he was dismissed for, for certain reasons. But um, subsequently, he has been very vociferous. He's been very committed, committed in the fight against corruption. He's demonstrated that um, he's willing to, I mean, he's somebody who speaks the truth. Okay. You know, and, and that but, is very important. But Justice, he, he, forgive me. Very, yes. Very, sorry? These legislators are saying that the legislative intent behind the independence of the person is uh, more like a non-partisan person who was required to occupy the position. It defeats the purpose, according to them. If somebody of political leanings like this is appointed to the office, do you disagree? You know, political leaning, you mean because he's, he, will, he is an NDC member? That is what they are saying, particularly. Well, they, should be, they should be glad. I would have thought that that is what uh, they would be glad that the president had the courage to appoint somebody who is a member of the rival political party. So I don't see how that can be used against uh, the, the president in this particular appointment. You know, I, I think that um, uh, many people are presently surprised that the president has had the courage to appoint somebody who is known to be a strong member of the NDC, you know. But I think that the president has appointed him because he's known to be uh, an anti-corruption crusader. He's known to be very committed to the fight. And uh, he's known to be a very competent prosecutor as okay. a deputy attorney general and as an attorney general. Mm. So I, I, don't really, I don't really support the argument that um, that destroys the independence of nature. I mean, everybody must have some leaning one way or the other. So, you know, I don't think that that in itself disqualifies him. Rather, I think that it, it makes him more suitable. And I think he's aware of the fact that, you know, he, people will be watching his performance, mm. you know, and they will be, he, he will be conscious of the fact that he belongs to the NDC, that there were, there were some disagreement between him and, and the NDC government. You know, he, so he's mindful of these antecedents. And therefore, I think that that would even spur him up to, be, to, to, to demonstrate his independence and his neutrality and impartiality. Because knowing him, knowing his character, I am sure that he's not going to allow, you know, such considerations to influence him. Because after all, you know, his reputation is on the line, a reputation which has built over the years. And so, uh, you know, I mean, if I were in his position, I would do everything to make sure that those critics are silent. Justice, um, when I spoke to you last week, Wednesday, you indicated that the person at least should be acceptable to the opposition NDC too. That's one way of assuring that there is general appreciation of the work of the person who's appointed in this case. From the indications we are picking up, it doesn't look like they believe that he is the best person to do the job. Not because he's not competent, but because of what I've espoused early on. Well, I think I had uh, the minority leader, I see you in here. Uh, spoke favorably about this appointment. So um, there may be a division of opinion among the NDC, but at least I think um, the, 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 the view of somebody like the minority leader is extremely important. I mean, he speaks okay. for the party. I get you. And I think, I think uh, his, his uh, comments and observations were quite favorable. Before I let you go, there is, however, a case that he's dealt with before that is still linked to, and that is the prosecution of the retrieval of some 51 million Ghana cities somewhat declared by the Supreme Court as unconstitutionally paid to Mr. Alfred Agbeshiwoyome. He's supposed to be aiding the state to retrieve that as special prosecutor. Can he be asked to take over this particular case as the law mandates the Attorney General to do as and when he deems fit? Or he would have to, because of conflict of interest, stay of this one? Well, that is a matter for him to decide. And I'm sure, I'm sure that he would make the right decision. Uh, he would take all these factors into consideration and decide whether it's a matter that he should um, continue or whether he should leave it for uh, the Attorney General or any other person to, to continue. So that, that, that is a matter for his personal uh, decision.
I, I was actually referencing your competence on the conflict of interest rules. Um, yeah, well, I don't, I don't think, um, I, 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 I it, it's a very, I don't think it raises conflict of interest, you know, because what interests, what are the conflicting interests in this case? You know, he pursued the matter uh, as an anti-corruption crusader, you know. He wanted to retrieve monies which he believed that uh, the state had lost. You know, uh, he is in a similar position now to prosecute uh, economic crimes like corruption and embezzlement. You know, and the objective is it's, it's virtually the same uh, as to whether he would he would determine that this is a rule that he should continue. Of course, that is a matter for his personal decision. But um, you know, this is just one single case. I mean, he has. I'm sure he has. A, a long list of cases that he has to deal with, you know, all related to the William case. So let's see how he, he handles his position. But what I think is that we should all give him his support. After all, corruption affects the, the nation. It's a national development issue. And if he succeeds, he succeeds to the benefit of all, whether we are your NPP, NDC, or CPP. And so, you know, we must try to remove partisanship from from national issues, especially national development issues like corruption and the economy. So I think that um, as, as of now, let us all give him the necessary support that he needs to be able to, to discharge the functions, you know, effectively. I'm most grateful to you, former Shraj Boss. I'm Justice Emil Short for your thoughts on this matter. So you had a former Shraj boss, um, Justice Emil Schott, on the appointment of Martin A. B. K. Amidu as the special prosecutor. The special prosecutor's office, I did tell you earlier, is to investigate and prosecute cases of corruption and corruption-related offenses to prevent corruption in the public sector and recover the proceeds of corruption and corruption-related offenses. Well, uh, there are some interesting developments following that. We'll be settling into another conversation pretty soon on Upfront Today. After this break. You welcome back. This is Upfront. The first part of this conversation was spent trying to appreciate the president's uh, nomination for the Office of Special Prosecutor. And the very first time this office has been set up in this particular year, this, uh, uh, what they call it, 2017, don't forget, it was part of the NPP's um, manifesto promises for the year 2016, run up into this particular year. So what is interesting about the office is that it has a job. It is supposed to investigate and prosecute cases of corruption and corruption-related offenses to prevent corruption in the public sector. But it doesn't have to only work in the private sector. Actually, private sector people who are also corrupt dealings with which had everything to do with government would equally be investigated and prosecuted under this office. And the, as Justice M. Shaw describes it, the pleasant surprise is that Martin Alamisi Benkaisa Amidu, that is the former Attorney General who was the Attorney General for a very long time, that Jerry Rollins and under J.E.A. Mills between 2011 and 2012, January to January anyway, was also the substantive Attorney General. Of course, he's been very popular for his pursuit of corruption-related cases, even when he was booted out of office in 2012. Popular amongst those is going to the Supreme Court and winning the case against Afed Agbeshi Woyome, that 51 million Ghana cities. So we'll be having that conversation, and Justice Emil Short, former Shrad boss, gave us some thoughts in that particular direction. But we're settling into another conversation, which is also to do with the nation Ghana, though. My guest today is an unusual guest here on Afron. He's very controversial, but looks not so much of controversy in his own eyes. The man of God is also a prophet. He is the head of the Glorious Wave Ministry. Reverend Emmanuel Bedikobi, you are welcome to our front. Thank you, sir. I hope you are doing well today. By the grace of God. I mean, to many, you do not look as controversial as the issues surrounding you and the things you've said in Thais Passam. Is that how you operate? Uh, when you speak, one, the mind of God, two, the truth, you have problem. People want you to speak for them. How they perceive things is how they want you to speak. But you can't speak like anybody. You must speak the way you think, and two, the way God is also thinking. 
Let me run this by you. We'll get into the details of that. <laughs> so, but let me run by you. Mm -hmm. The biggest news in the country today is the appointment of a special prosecutor. I mean, you in times past have complained about how the nation is being run on several fronts. You've had time to also state your views on some of these issues. Are you impressed with the appointment of Martin Amidou as the special prosecutor? I remember he once spoke against this office. I remember. Yes, he wrote several recall. times against it. So I'm surprised. So I don't know how he can be able to do the same work, the work he spoke against. I don't know. Maybe his speaking against mm -hmm. was to fine-tune the mm -hmm. law providing for the office. Now that the law has been established, mm -hmm. what prevents him from taking the position? If the law has been fine-tuned or if the, yeah. the law has been done, then he should take over. He should do it. But if it was it's still the same as he said earlier, then he shouldn't touch that office. He shouldn't even be there at all. Will he deliver? Can he fight corruption? Uh, I know he will deliver. deliver. Because in times past, mm -hmm. he spoke against it. Okay. So I'm sure that he will if he fails, I'll be surprised. We will fight corruption. I, 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 I pray he, he, he will. But and I know he can. Because he's somebody who, who seemingly, you can, you can see what he sees and just uh, perceive that, oh, this man can fight it. Let's see. Let's see how he goes about but it. But there are those who say that we can never ever root out corruption. It's ingrained in mankind and mm. greed is part mm. of it. Mm. Is this something that, mindful of your experience, you believe in? Uh, unless we leave this earth, nobody can ever remove corruption. Everybody is corrupt, but there are levels. I always say it. Mm. Some want to do it the, 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 like the, the, the highest way. Some want okay. to do it the least way. For instance, government will tell you, oh, they, we are not corrupt. But sometimes you know how they do it. They hide it in budgets. Mm. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> they'll, they'll hide it in budgets. Okay. So mm. they'll, they'll, they'll just blow the budget. They'll make it big so that they can chop. And they'll say, we are not corrupt. Because sometimes when you look at such the amount going to certain areas of the, the, the sectors of the economy, and you ask yourself, why? What is that money? What would that money be used for? You don't think they are justified? Most of the money, they are not justified. Okay. So now I'll ask you to, I mean, we in the Fourth Republic mm -hmm. have had Jerry mm -hmm. Rollins, we've mm -hmm. had J.A. Mills, we also mm -hmm. had former President Kofor, mm -hmm. and also had former President Mahama. Mm -hmm. Then currently, um, the President Nana Dankwa Kufado is in charge of the state. Mm -hmm. Which of them were corrupt? Except you, you catch the person. You can't say they Nobody were corrupt. Nobody is corrupt except you catch the person. That's why I said somebody it, it, it may be seen as incorruptible, mm -hmm. but this, uh, nobody's incorruptible. But they can find means to get things done. Even which, pastors? Even pastors. Like yourself. Like myself. Nobody is exempted from corruption. Then we can't deal with it ever. So I always say that all we must do is that we must talk to people gradually to change. But you say to root out corruption, it will never work. Because the pastor, he has a certain church member who is in government, who brings the pastor money. Where okay. does he get the money from? The pastor will never ask the, that church folk. Should they reject it? Uh, if you, you, the Spirit of God tells you reject it, reject it. But if he doesn't tell you, you accept it. But the question is, why don't you ask the person where he got the money from? Do you ask your church members where they get the money from? Uh, I, I had one of, the, uh, uh, one of the persons working in past government. Okay. And when you come to me about a certain matter, I'll ask you, what, uh, uh, how did this thing come about? I'll ask you. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you because I don't want anything to happen that tomorrow I'll be involved. Okay. Oh, I, I took this money. Where, where, what happened? I gave it to my pastor. No, I'll ask you. That's why I say I don't want to flow with politicians. Because if you don't take care, the money they give to you, sometimes stolen money, sometimes, uh, how do you call it? The, uh, uh, before, before they do a contract, they give, you, they give the person the money up front before the contract is given to that person. It's all corruption. Th that's interesting to, 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 to note. Um, because your church is popular. By the grace of God. Notable people are in your church. Only by the grace of God. Let me get to appreciate how all of these happen. Mm -hmm. And perhaps before then, mm -hmm. you, I mean, became extremely popular for a prophetic statement you made mm -hmm. about the president of today, mm -hmm. Nanado Danko mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Contrary to your prophecy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he will not be president, mm -hmm. he became president. I never said so. You never said he will not be president? I said, you go, you go and click up to YouTube. I said... The, the seat is for him, but oh, I'm okay. not sure he can take it because of certain things I've seen. You are not sure? Yes, because of certain things I've seen. So if you say so you're wrong. I was not wrong. You say... About his president now. So I, I don't know what he did. The seat is for Mr. Raymond. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't do A, B, C, D, I'm not sure he what, can pick What it. was he expected to do? No, it, it's passed. No, I just want to know, it, so that we know what he did. So, uh, I was speaking from the prophetic background. Okay. Based on certain, certain matters of his background. Is, what are these matters? It's passed. Because some people actually hold you to it that we can't trust what you say because of that particular incident. So have, have I not been professing over the years? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, but, but this is important because uh -huh. that's what to do with political power. Uh -huh. and political power is a very serious matter. Uh, 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 God, the same God, told the prophet to go and tell the king, you're going to die. Uh -huh. The king said, no, 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 I can't die now. The king went before God, prayed. God told the same prophet, go and tell him he will live for it extra years. So, so, so you, you, every man has the chance to do certain things. So Nanado did something extraordinary. I can't tell. Because I was not with him. Good but choice. I said what I but should say. But did you pray for him? Oh no. Why didn't you intervene? Uh, every man, you deal with your sickness yourself. Really? Yes, because when you go to hospital. Are you a man of God? People have to come to you for you to intervene. So when the person behalf. comes. And nobody from Nanado's camp came to you. Uh, for these 2016 elections, yeah. I only prophesied. I stayed back. Mm. Yes. Okay, so how do you feel he as president of the Republic of Ghana? Thank God. He's been one year in office. Oh, uh, for one year, it's not been easy. But has he done well? I think it's okay. I'm asking you. I mean, you. Have a but larger... you, 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 also, you also on the ground. I, I agree, think it's okay. But I, I, you have a larger reach than mm -hmm, myself. Mm -hmm. You operate in the prophetic mm -hmm, realm. You're mm -hmm. just also another human being, mm -hmm. like every other person. Yes, sir. So what you see is beyond what I can see in this case. In the spiritual, mm -hmm. for now, you don't see Ghana okay in the spiritual. But in the natural, when you ask somebody, I think it's okay, including myself, because I'm, I'm a, a family man. I, I give money for mm. things to be bought. I know what is out there. My half church members, some are into business, some are into that. They come back and tell me things are tough. Things are tough. Yes. Are Ghanaians worse off? Worse off? Yes. I say for now, yes. And for 2018, yes. Perfect. But for 2019, things will be better. We'll come back to continue the conversation. You're still live on our front here. My guest is Reverend Imano Bedukobi. I'm sure by now you know why he's my guest here in the studios of Upfront. Very unusual guest, but I'm sure you're enjoying him. We'll be back after this break to continue the conversation. You're welcome back to Upfront. The reaction was the role of religion in the modern state. And early on, we had a brief conversation on the appointment of Martin Amidu as the special prosecutor. My guest today is Prophet Emmanuel Bedukobi. We started with the conversation of where Ghana is going in the year 2018. And I've been asking one year of President Akufuado's tenure in office, how far he's been faring. Reverend, you're welcome back. Thank you, sir. You did say that it's been tough mm -hmm. the first year. Yes, sir. Was it expected to be tough? Uh, I, all I saw within the spiritual atmosphere was that things will be tough in 2017. And so I said it. Whether the government had just come in or whatever, I said this year, 2017, it will be tough. But inflation is down. Um, we do know that the debt to GDP ratio is also down. So when you say tough, exactly what do you mean? The question is sometimes we need to connect things to our system. You see, this is Africa. This is not Europe. Oh, I sometimes, you. sometimes look at all of us and I ask myself, how do we see things? When you are dealing with African, it's different. If it's Europe, everything is in conformity with the, the structure and the system. Here, the person in the marketplace, they determine the prices. Does the government determine prices? So you say inflation has come down. Mm -hmm. The person there is, he, he determines how he or she sells his or her things. So how do you now say inflation is down and so it will change with things out there? It doesn't so, work. It doesn't so, synchronize. So in the year 2017, mm -hmm. did President Akufuado do enough to take us where we're supposed to go? Uh, I would say it, as I often say it, it was too much of speeches. He spoke without action. Spoke so much. Less action. And two, for me, even the free SHS, yes. it was not, it, it was hurriedly done. Jesus said something. He that want to build anything must first sit down and count the cost. 
But we told the cost, 400 uh -huh. million in the budget. Uh -huh. And how much was paid upfront? Okay, so 20% is what we were told were paid upfront. Why? Because they explained that um, they needed to take care of some other costs first and foremost, and other budgetary allocations were required in this case. And that is your flagship policy? Yeah. So what, what the 80% is it paid? Uh, they say there are plans of paying. We don't know whether they've made the payments yet. It, it, they, they rushed it. They should have taken their time. You, you see, it, though, the people will be talking, but don't please them. Do what is right. Eventually, they will think, and say, ah, look at this government doing things rightly. It was really rushed through. So has it been a success or it has not been a success? To me, it's not a success. I, I mean, how Because the next, yes. those who are coming in, yes. they're about to also enter, yeah. right? So that the, this, this people will now be in the second year. Yeah. Then the first year, even those who are in the second year, those who are now into the second year, you've not be able to clear the eighty percent. So sorry, when you do these evaluations, mm -hmm. do you do them on spiritual basis, or you are just doing policy no, evaluation? No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm now coming back to how it is on the ground. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yes. Mm. So you 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 told me. Yeah. I'm talking about physical. You told me this is your flagship policy. This is you want to do it to help the nation. No problem. Accept it. It's a good intention. Jesus said, sit down, come the course, plan. That's how it should go. So I'm linking it with the spiritual. And 80% still in arrears. The kids are going back to school. Then the, those other that ones coming into the first year, they are coming in. How do you cater for all this? But the budgetary allocation of $1.13 billion has been made for that particular position. Are you convinced that this money will not get to the people? 2018, it will not be easy. Oh, well, the same toughness that you said. Yes. But let me just finally mm -hmm. ask you, apart mm -hmm. from free SHS mm -hmm. and the problems you outlined mm -hmm. with the implementation, mm -hmm. what else went wrong in that year, 2017? Let me just go back and say something to all viewers. Ghana has a serious problem. What's the problem? Ghana's problem is more of spiritual than physical. If it comes to doing things, we can do it. But many have said that this is the excuse pastors have used to actually deceive the nation for an a very long time. Jesus was called a deceiver, but people are following him. And we are a religious state. Jesus. Oh, Eighty-six percent of our population are Christian. Mm -hmm. Fourteen percent mm -hmm. are Muslim. Mm -hmm. We surely have mm -hmm. what it takes to be seen mm -hmm. in this case as religious people, don't we? Jesus was called a deceiver, but people are following him. So what have on we been Christmas doing wrong day, spiritually? On Christmas Day, they go and uh, appreciate his birth. Mm. So do you know the problem? The question is, why don't we sit down and ask, where did we go wrong? That's the question you're asking. After Kwame Nkrumah, has the nation, after his exit, has the nation been improving or declining? If you are using as in periods, mm -hmm. per each of the mm -hmm. times that we've been mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. the Fourth Republic has been the most successful. Successful? Yes. Has there been changes in the lives of the people? In terms of um, the people who were lifted out of poverty between 1992 and 2006, 50% of people who were in poverty were taken out of poverty. By, by who? It was done by who? It was done by government policies throughout the period. And it is true? I want to believe so. The statistics show that. And so many people are poor? Oh, yeah, of course. We have not lifted everybody out of poverty mm -hmm. yet, but we have improved the situation. Don't you think so? I've seen that infrastructure yeah. is there now. The physical, a lot of things are there. But the issue is that how many people have progressed? So, Reverend, what exactly is our spiritual problem? Thank you. You see? Any nation, God gives what we call leader or what we call founder. And until Ghana decides to do the right thing, Ghana will have problems. What's the right thing? Please, who founded Christianity? Jesus Christ. Who founded Ghana? Well, it's contentious. So Why should it be contentious? Who founded Ghana? Kwame Nkrumah. So we should agree on that. We learned it in school. The Reverend Michael Kui says it's not true. Oh, that, that one can be... He's a speaker of parliament. Uh -huh. He's a former professor mm -hmm. of law and okay. our politics. Who too. declared the independence of Ghana? Uh, Kwame Nkrumah. So who founded it? So, and what has that got to do with our poverty let, situation let, now? Let me tell you a, 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 a truth. Anytime a nation is not appreciative to some, especially the founder, it has consequences. So when we appreciate Kwame Nkrumah as a founder, we'll be better off. Ghana, no, Ghana must do... You see, everything has its... System. Okay. When you go by the system, you get what you are looking for. But we are for instance, Day. we reference him Founders Day. We've been celebrating Founders Day. Since are, we, are we still not contending with it? Yes, we are. So why are we contending with but it? We have not changed the law yet. We are proposals of changing mm -hmm. the law, but we are not changing it yet. So, so in in a way, we accept him. 
Yes, somehow. Uh, uh, somehow people, some or people, completely? No, we don't. We can't all agree on accepting him. There's a plan Why? to change the law. Do you agree or disagree with that? Why? Because Do you know, the problem of the black man is that he has time for things which doesn't matter. Plan to change the law? No. You see, just accept somebody founded the nation. Give him the due. Let the blessing come on the nation. So why we just admit that, will it be okay? By the way, if you decide to reject what has been done, what happens to you? But under Mills, we you know what is causing? Under Mills, we said Kwame Nkuma was our founder, mm -hmm. but we we're not in any way okay. Th that is one. It's called foundation. Yes. Then there's what we call pillars. What are the pillars in this case? Do we know principles that builds a nation? Which are these principles? Some are spiritual, some are natural. Because talking about a nation, if you only make it natural, you fail. America started with natural. Are things working for them? They have a better GDP than we have. They have a better, what they call it, economy than we have today. Better economy? Yes. Better? Yes, the economy is and much more sure? than we have today. And are you sure? Yes. The hmm. American HDI is higher than Ghana's uh, Human Development Index. Material? Yes. But the question is, when you come to our side, the question is, if the more you leave the spiritual, you suffer in the natural. That's the truth. Most people don't know these things. You see, every nation, Acts chapter 17, is founded by God. What spiritually can we do to improve? What can we do? We, we, we don't need to leave out God. But God is part of it. We do thanksgiving all the time and mm -hmm. give thanks to God. Is God directing us? I ought to believe so. Where? But we are a secular state. We can't wake up and say God direct us. We are a secular state. Secular means everything is within it. Yes. And all those things look up to God. The Muslim looks up to God. The Christian looks up to God. So why don't you go to God to direct us? How do we go to God to direct us? And which of the gods are we going to for direction? Almighty God, the creator of heaven and the earth. The Christian one, the Muslim one, the Pentecostal the, one, the Orthodox one, the God that is being preached to by the African traditional religion. It's only one God we have. Really? The God of this earth. So you and um, Akonedi as the same God. Say it again. Akonedi. You and him are the same God. No. So which God do you think I'm talking about the maker of heaven and earth. That's what they also believe that they have a maker of heaven and earth. If they believe so, then the God, that God should, the, the God should, God, that kind of God should direct How them. How does he get to direct all of us? So the issue is that it is not up to us. It's up to the leaders of the nation. Men of God, whoever, come. Tell us what God is saying for the nation to go forward. You said 2018 is going to be a tough year. Tough year. You said it 2017. I said it in 2016 again 2017. I've said it also in 2017 against 2018. I've only said that 2019 will be better. Will be better yes. in 2020. What's going to happen in 2018? Hardships. What kind of hardship? Material hardships. Job losses. Should we expect Companies any will fold up. Catastrophe. Catastrophe in what sense? As in prominent people leaving the earth? Sure. Those things have said it. Who are this these? Year? I don't want to say names and then become <laughs> the because subject without of that, we don't get to know the people uh, that... Uh, 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 if you say it and somebody thinks, if you, why you, have you taken my matter out there? It becomes a problem. Oh, Most okay. of you, we are tired. Have you spoken to the people that would actually... Uh, if, I, if I get to them, I'll tell them. Ah, now, the question is, um, how can Ghana avert the hardship that's supposed to come in this year? Every problem has a solution. What's the solution? Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord God with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. What can the president do differently this year? He should let God direct. How does he do that? Seek those he knows it is their job. But recently, he actually called for a national thanksgiving. But that is people thanksgiving. It's a prince. Thanksgiving is a principle of God for men. But it's different from direction. Mm. Yes, principles are not direction. I, I get your point. I am actually having to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. There are some who have said that those of you in the prophetic mm -hmm. ministry, mm -hmm. um, and they've made specific reference mm -hmm. to yourself mm -hmm. and uh, the Reverend Osu mm -hmm. they say you are hackling over power. Who should get attention from uh, power holders in this country? Is this true? Uh, you, 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 nobody needs it because outside government, God caters for us. What is your problem with Reverend Osu Bempa? I have no problem with him. Why does he have a problem with you? Uh, uh, unless you ask Why him. Why is he saying he'll collapse your church? Unless you ask him. What are you doing about that? Uh, on this earth, life goes on. You get to everything, something happens, you pray, you do the right thing, life goes on. I don't have a problem with him. 
to those who claim that, I mean, those of you in the prophetic mm -hmm. uh, ministry mm -hmm. are false. Mm -hmm. There's a biblical definition of a false prophet, mm -hmm. and if people qualify to be so, what do you say to them? Uh, let, let Jesus said, these things don't matter. Let it all grow to the day of judgment. I'm told you said uh, Nigerian President Buhari will die in the previous year, 2017. I never said so. I said he will be taken to hospital twice. It was in my prophecy. Not dead? Not dead. I said it rather in this year. This year then? Yes. He will die? Yes. If he doesn't die, what happens? God said as you see it, so I've said it. You see, the, the prophecy, prophecy, but, but there's prophecy. But we should have prophecy. evidence that when you say it mm -hmm. happens. Oh, I've said a lot. I said uh, 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 President Mills will die on 24th July. You that, might see the date. In, yes, in church. So on which day would uh, he died, Buhari die? God has not told me. When God says you say it. Okay. Uh -huh. when, because you are just a messenger. Mm -hmm. So you say what your source told you. So which of the gods do you believe? Reverend also be impressed God or your God? We all have one God. Really? And God knows how to deal with every messenger. Because he called them. For instance, you have footballers on the but pitch. But your messages are not in coherence. He has a different message from your own. Uh, it may, I don't know what God told him. For instance, some guys came and asked me, uh, Bishop Daniel Binim is trying to burn up some, burn some panties and those things. So they came and said, it's not my matter. God called him. God told him to do something. It's not Should my issue. pay tax? Uh, under our laws, are churches enjoined to pay tax? They are not going to make it so. Okay, if that's what they think. Would you agree to pay tax? If the, if the law is made, why not? Would it be okay for churches to pay tax? Uh, for me, I think church already pays tax because the people in the church, they are the church. They buy things out there. I also buy things out there. We all pay tax. So if you still want the church after paying tax to pay another tax, that's up to the government. Reverend, I'm told I don't have any time left. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank we you. should do this conversation very soon yes, and continue sir. on a ledger plate yes, and look sir. at the most important issues yes, of the year. Sir. I'll be seeing to this year the things you say will bring hardship yes, and sir. we will see how we can deal with that. Yes, well, folks, that's where we tie the nice ribbons on today's edition of Upfront. Mm -hmm. My name is Raymond Aqua. <laughs>